Next up we have Megan McGee. The title of her talk is Mafalda Takes On, How an Argentine Comic Strip from the 60s and 70s is Relevant Today. Megan did the first half of her MA in Literature in Spanish in Mexico City as a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar, and she did her second half at UW-Milwaukee. She's too lazy to do a doctorate and compete for the right to teach Spanish composition to board undergrads, so she now works at a translation company by day. Some of her numerous hobby, hobbies are performing sketch and improv, which some of you may be known her for, uh, dancing the Lindy Hop, which others of you might know her for, and uh, as an experimental gardener in soccer. Particularly the experimental gardener, maybe some of you know her for that. Maybe not, I'm not implying anything. So give it up for Megan. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about Mafalda. It's an Argentine comic strip that ran from 1964 to 1973, and it was drawn by Kino, this famous uh, cartoonist. And it's been described as a combination of Doonesbury and Peanuts, and some people compare it to Boondocks or Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, the strip's title character, Mafalda, she's a six-year-old girl, and she's both innocent and yet precocious. So for example, she wants to be a UN interpreter to help achieve world peace, but she says in order to do that, she probably needs to know English, Russian, and Judo. She hates soup, loves the Beatles, and has a pet turtle named Bureaucracy. <laughs> That's all fine and good, but okay, why do we care now? Well, even 25 years after Kino stopped drawing the strip, it is still popular. And evidence? Well, for one, merchandise. Note the swim ensemble, which I totally want. Um, and lots of books. And the Mafalda craze, it's not limited to Latin America either. It's actually popular all over the world. Translated into traditional, simplified Chinese, Japanese, Greek, French, Italian, and Portuguese. And there was just an expo on Mafalda in June in Japan, of all places. But curiously enough, even though these characters and ideas seem to resonate around the world, it's not really very well known in English, so I'm going to remedy that today. Uh, we're going to look at some comic strips and the issues that they raise. Um, in this one, for example, it sums Mafalda up pretty well. You'll see uh, she makes an idealistic, childlike call for peace, but she's still pragmatic enough to realize the limits of her power. And I think that people identify with this feeling of powerlessness. Um, I think this is like the polar opposite of Family Circus, which I personally hate. So, a quick note on translation. I found a couple strips in English on the web, but most of the translations I'm reading are mine. And humor can get lost in translation. So, I tried to pick ones that are easy to translate. Um, fortunately, Kino's drawings, they really help drive the point home. I love this fifth strip. You get the idea just from the picture. So, uh, we're going to look at then. Uh, okay, a couple different institutions. One is school. Anyone know Spanish conjugation? Here we have her saying, I trust, you trust, he trusts, etc., etc. And in the last slip, last one, she says, oh, what a group of uh, naive people, no? <laughs> and here in, uh, in this one, the teacher says, our, our land is one of the principal producers of Mafalda answers pessimists. Zero in sincerity. So schools teach conformity and not independent thought. Surprise. Next up, parents and children. Kino says he talks about how we treat children. Dad says, Mafalda, if I explained Vietnam to you, you wouldn't understand it. Of course not, because I'm an idiot. No, it's not that you're an idiot. It's just not a problem for kids. Oh no? No. And what if you explained it to me without the pornographic parts? <laughs> Uh, another one is marriage and family gets satirized often. Um, Kino uses Susanita, a friend of Mafalda's. And in the third panel, Susanita says, If you don't love your husband, do you have the right to feel free and abandon him? No. Because first, that would be attacking families, which are the base of our society. And second, because that would be wasting the chance to have him close by at all times in order to ruin his life anytime you feel like it. <laughs> Feminism also comes up. Mafalda's mother in the strip started a degree but didn't finish it. And Mafalda says, uh, Mom, what do you think of the future of the women's liberation movement? Uh, they're very, there's a strong character uh, contrast because Mafalda's mom is always cleaning. There's also silent cartoons that appear, uh, but not yet, apparently. Oh, here we are. <laughs> These silent 
comics uh, were really typical of Kino's style. And you can see the feelings expressed by these characters, it's super universal, um, what happens with attraction. Interesting point, um, although Kino is clearly like promoting feminism, he still always portrays the woman as the object of affection and the man as the active subject. So it's interesting to note kind of the contrast of things going on. This next one is a character whose name is Libertad, which means like freedom or liberty. Mafalda says, wow, you're so tiny, what's your name? Freedom. And then Freedom replies, did you come to your stupid conclusion yet? Everyone comes to the same stupid conclusion when they meet me. Kino says, I drew like that because freedom always seems so small. Consumerism. Here Miguelito says about TV, I'm just figuring it out, but apparently if you put on deodorant, then eat sausages, and then go buy a clothes dryer, you have to be a total idiot to not be happy. <laughs> Poverty comes up. Uh, Mafalda says, it breaks my heart to see poor people. Susan Eta agrees, me too. We should really give the poor shelter, employment, and ensure their security and well-being. Uh, and then the reply, why so much? It'd be enough just to hide them. The next strip touches on racism, uh, especially on people who don't recognize their own bias. Susan Eta says, indignantly, me, prejudiced, in your imagination. When did I ever say anything against those filthy blacks, huh? When, let's see, huh? So I think it's really smart because uh, that's a topic you don't see touched on in such a way that you know it kind of makes a point. The last couple strips I have here talk about progress, and they're in English, you'll have to read them. Uh, Mafalda on her optimistic days has a lot of faith in humanity, science, progress, but here Susanita has a different idea of what's important. Important ladies play bridge, right? Uh, then there's a series of strips that touch on economic development. Uh, Mafalda compares Argentina's situation to that of the United States, Canada, and Europe, and draws the conclusion that her country's problem is that they are living upside down. Obviously, the, pro like, the whole situation is much more complex. I mean, Argentina's history at the time, I can summarize like, coup d'etat, wages are frozen, currency devalued, military presidents, then elections, followed by oil crisis, demonstrations, small massacres by armed political groups. But so, even if that's the case, how does an upside down country write itself? And at the very end, there's a slide that I think Mafalda solves the problem in an interesting way, which we'll see in just a second. And I picked this last slide to end on because I think it also is a good metaphor for what I'm hoping people can think about. Just as Mafalda changes her perspective by putting the southern hemisphere on top, Maybe it's good for us to sometimes be on the bottom. I mean, you can never really see anything from someone else's point of view, but if you see what people from other countries are thinking about, like in comics, it can be a good start. So, thank you.